and just populate the positive image of Islam in the social media so people can actually personally know what Islam is about. It's about kindness, about respect, helping people and not anything about violence. And I think the campaign or the advocation was successful. I mean, today, so many Muslims in the Western um, atmosphere, in the Western, maybe in U.S., in Canada, and so maybe in UK, France, all other countries like that, they enjoy, I think, like to a minimum, to a minimum. I mean, it's still a work in progress. I mean, this still is still a work in progress. I mean, like, you know, in France, they ban um, people wearing niqab. If you live in France, you cannot be wearing niqab. And I think there's still like petitions going on because there are Muslim sisters in, in France and they want to be able to wear their niqab. God forbid, I was like, that that happened in Canada or, or anything like that. You know what? This topic is too deep. Let's not even go there. We're going to our next topic. I, I swear, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's like people are trying to live modestly and it's only like just the minority group in the society and they, they are, you know they said that by the in the end of the times things are going to get worse so imagine worse imagine worse like i mean I, i'm already exhausted suffocated right now so i cannot i cannot even perceive or even imagine that world where it's worse because I think this is worse. We all have impulses, like desires that we want to do this, we want to do that, we want to do everything. We feel like we are unlimited. But we are. But we are. You, you can't be like, so people be like, I want to, I want to become, I mean, I'm a female and I want to become a male. Why would you torture yourself? But you know, they say it's gender dysmorphia. Yeah, yeah. Remember when we were in, when we were in ADS, we probably play ball more than, I mean, we play ball. We play those, those felele and like soccer. We are like tomboys. Imagine now that uh, we, we feel that we are not girls. I mean, like, make it make sense. Make it make sense. This is the dilemma. Like, how do you live in that society? Imagine. Like, because you, you don't want, if people say hi to you, you want to say hi back. Regardless of whatever thing is going in their life but you know i think the consensus at least from the western perspective is like you know as a muslim you still have to be cautious of what you say and how you represent islam i was watching something um a while back and they they these people were saying literally you're actually like an ambassador for islam you know you represent islam so what they identify as something that the Quran says no. So what? Who knows that they might be guided one day and they become Muslim? Because it happens. I mean, there are some that they fully go out there and they be like, no, I am for this. But well, right, they are Muslim. They turn, they change everything. They change their um, their demeanor. They change their dressing. They and they accept Islam. So in that sense, the people will say that, you know, you still have to be cautious how you associate with people. They are still people. And as long as there is life, Allah can guide them. And you don't want to say something one day and you don't want to tell, say something and be like, oh, this thing is not going to happen for, it's for you. Or you don't want to say something that on the judgment day and Allah call you and be like, you said this to this person, and that is why they didn't convert. You know, you think that you feel the need or you have the right to speak to their way of life. But well, really, you don't. Allah is the, is the most wise and the one that is going to judge all of us. All of us. Regardless if you say that you are perfect Muslim or you pray your prayers or you do fasting, you do extra I think it was. Oh, in... 
you still have this fear, but like there's no way that those things are acceptable. Yes, yes, exactly. And like um I think it's in Surah it's Surah to Najimu that yeah. Allah says um uh, for Matuzaku and Fuzaku something like that. It goes like that, like Allah is the one that knows which one of you actually um worship him i think i'm don't call, like i'm I th- i'm loosely translating so in that manner whether i meet them in my in my personal life and my work you know i still i think I me mean, the way i understand this is that i still have to respect people you know respect goes a long way and who knows what you would do to some other person that would totally change their mind and you know, you benefit them in a way and perhaps they will also benefit you in another way. You know what I mean? So the fact that people are doing something, you know, they are these believers, the only that we should not relate to them in a very... Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in a very yeah. respectful manner. But when it comes to the issue of faith, so things that have to do with your faith, that is clashing with your faith, you are not going to associate with them in that area. And then you let them know you stand on certain issues, but they yeah. are in his everything. So there is nothing being nice to the believers. They have they have something now. It's all like I said, we cannot greet them. That is what they can relate with them. But when it comes to the issue of religion, your religion is very important. So yes, like, who knows? nobody knows who else is going to do their hands. Their yeah. Hands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> The right thing you feel like you are, you are, you are, you are doing the things that I don't know whether you're going to end it there or not. And yeah, definitely. And you just, I guess, you just have to advise versa. So when you are doing good, you have to be very careful, and then at the same time, you be careful as well. So, and be original. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. It doesn't mean that, I that I should not be saying that what you are doing is. Mm-hmm. If it is what we think, so we relate with them, but if it is something that has to do with our faith, so that is where the apathy comes. And when yeah. you know you your stand on certain issues, then I do think there's going to be a problem. Yes. Is well. Because everything is on coda. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. What else is Even if someone did not convert, because you feel that they are not being nice to the person. Yeah, the that is not going to be a Muslim in the first place. Mm-hmm. So you're not. So you just have to try your best to have a cordial relationship with people. If they people of your faith, don't compromise your faith. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. You just have to uphold your values. You know, know your standards. Know your like. This is this is the line that I don't want to cross, and I. And I pray to Allah to allow me and give me the strength to not cross this line. Like my religion is important to me. The discipline, the values are important. Like I will treat you as uh, like as yeah. human being, respectful, you know, despite our differences. You know, we all I guess we all are learning and as the world moves forward, we're still going to continue to learn. And you know, just one more thing that I will say. All these Muslim course scholars are saying that, you know what? Parents, be advised. Know what your children watch. Spiritual balance. We're try, trying to find that uh, spiritual balance. It started with my hijab. You know, I was in I was in grade 11. No, was I grade 11 or grade 12? That's like being in SS2 or SS3. I was in that class that a child like 18 years old 17 years old and you know i was so shy back then i mean like i was still pretty much new in canada and so shy but you know i continue to use my hijab my like the scarf that i have back then just wrap it around my head like this and go to school i would say that to a level i tried i i work my way around saying my prayer like actually being diligent but then back then it was not like i was very diligent i mean like i struggled and i knew that i prayed towards it because back then you know in 
when we went to Ileke uh, Madrasa, you know, there was a there was a teaching that you know if you're struggling in that stage of like um trying to pray, the way my ustad uh, explained to me was like start with do fad if you do fajr and you didn't do zor or you didn't do asr, try and make sure that you do isha. The reason that he gave back then was like, you know, when you when you commit a sin, um, like your they will say that the the angel the angels are told to wait to see if you're going to repent or if not, you know, and it continued like that through the day. Like say if I pray fajr, then I have a reward. But if I didn't pray zor, then I don't have a reward. But then. I so still, I don't, at that time, I don't have a scene written down. And then, again, for Aser and Maghrib, and then when you get to Isha and you still didn't pray, and I think that's when, like, the, they would say, like, write a scene down. I, I, I think, I'm not sure exactly. But that's the way that my stars kind of explain like that for us. So when I came here, and, you know, and I'm really grateful that I have that kind of transition and that kind of um, ideals in me that I still want to pray. Like, it doesn't matter that I'm in Nigeria or I'm in anywhere else in the world. Prayer is still a key. So, and for for quite a while, actually. So, I will pray my fajr at home. Because that's the, I mean, once I'm outside of my house. Going to Muslim school as an ADS, it helps us sometimes. You know, every time we're in school, we have to praise the word. We pray it in Jamaa. Everybody is there. If you want the cult, the Adam cult. You know, we, we used to have like Malima to, no, no, not her. Our prefect, our prefect, what? Amira, Amira prefect. I mean, like, this thing is big. It, the, Amira is like another kind of senior girl. She's in charge of mosque. So all, like the the prayer space, all the kettle, getting the water ready for people to um do ablution with. I mean, this is like another level of responsibility. Like it's a prefect. Like imagine, like we call this little girl, we call it Amira, Amira to yeah, yeah, yeah. The, like that kind of thing. So it helps that way. But here, you, I mean, we don't have that. I don't went to Christian school. I mean, it's a public school. There's no, there's no mosque. There is a Friday prayer. There's a Friday prayer that I later realized. I didn't know that there was a Friday prayer, but there was a Friday prayer. So I later started joining that Friday prayer and start going. But I didn't know there was anything about, I didn't know anything. So that was the way that I just kind of, you know, getting like that spiritual balance. But I think... For me, what helped was that I already have that knowledge. I already have that interest. So it just me and finding ways to build up, not only doing Fajr, but, but trying to do Zuhur too. So after high school, when I get to um, university, you know, you can build your schedule in university or college. So I get a chance to build my schedule. And, you know, there, are, there is a multi-faith prayer center. There's only like one or two. Actually, there was one, and then they build another one, which make it two. But they have that. And, you know, the multi-center, the multi-faith center is like everybody. The Christian use it. The Muslim use it. You know, the Muslims, they can, the Muslim students, they can go anytime and pray. But sometimes it's booked. So maybe they have to pray just outside you know it's still very good i like it they they gave us that um i think they the considering that the i mean in canada i don't think their main religion was is islam it's i think it's christianity but they give that space that you can practice your religion i mean you're a student you're part of the school community so they give you that chance and through that i would i will go i'll pray my father at home and you know, if there is a space, I mean, the space also helps. So I pray my Zuhur in school, Aser, Maghrib. And sometimes I pray my Isha too, because, you know, I just want to, like as a student, being at uh, school for so long, just want to get away, but everything done out so you can get home and go to bed. So I always do that. 
And for a while, alhamdulillah, that works well. I was able to pray. I was able to build that. What do I, what's the word? That discipline. I was able to build that discipline to pray and to pray diligently and say the five daily prayers. So that was, that was beautiful. For me, it's the interest, the knowledge that I have before, the interest, the community, the space. It allows me to build that spiritual balance. I know some people will say that it doesn't, you know, even like as a uh, mean that they are in Canada, but maybe they face some kind of um, religionism or um, discrimination against them, like in terms of maybe wearing the hijab, maybe at workplace, maybe at school. Everybody's experience is very different. I have, I think I have a kind of more calm experience. So I feel like I enjoy, I enjoy my religion. Like I enjoy Islam, even like practicing Islam in the West. Because some people might say, oh, but these people are dense. They're always like attacking that with dresses, blah, blah, blah. But despite that, have you enjoyed this level of, um, of calmness or of um, authority or cause? Or of how you want to lead your life. Have you enjoyed? Because personally, I'll say, yes, I have. You know, I mean, in some in some parts or parts of the U.S. or maybe, maybe Canada. Or, and now we talk about like how, like in France, they don't even allow, they ban um, the car. So like, of course, in that, in that space, how will you find your spiritual balance? But if you if you have that space where it allows for you to practice your religion, I think it's still worth to be um, thankful for. That's what I, how I see it. Because when you think about in the time of the prophets, when the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when he was um, preaching Islam, you know, they were the, I mean his family and all the people back then they were very they, they were very negative about. His um, message, and to him, even though he's this trustworthy person, like his personality is um, great. So why wouldn't you want to follow that? But they didn't give him that space to to preach and to um, to worship. I don't know if I can compare the experience. It's kind of like what happens in like some parts of the Western space when they are being attacked or they are uh, Muslims are born maybe some other religious faith are also being attacked like this or being negated like that. You know, for me as a black Muslim that have that um, Western experience, however level it is, this is just my opinion and my experience. I, I enjoyed, like, at a, to a certain degree, you, you got to work with what you have. You can't expect it all to be laid out for you or to be given to you. You have to strive. And if this trial is easier, I mean, alhamdulillah, some other Western Muslim or some other people that maybe migrated to and had to go through um, some kind of maybe more discriminative, more elaborate kind of discrimination, like religiously, they might say that they don't enjoy um, practicing their religion. You know, say um, Arab Muslim, maybe in an Arab sister wear their hijab and somebody shouts um, terrorist. You know, that, that makes you feel bad. You know, personally, I've never been called that. And I don't know, maybe for, maybe for an obvious, obvious reason or not, I don't know. But I've never been called that. So, you know, when you hear these kind of stories from other Muslims, you kind of like want to understand like where this is coming from and how and why you know and it's a, it's a deep topic so for me i'll say like space time you work with what you have for me i'll just say that like work work with what you have you you can't have it all you know what i mean so work with what you have like i handle like if i'm not able to pray at all if i'm not able to pray at all i think i think i'll be more sad but I'm able to pray. I mean, like you have a system and you live in like in all this chaosness. You still have some people that are very genuine and they say like you, 
you have your right as a person to practice your religion. And I think for Muslims in the West, we, I think really we need to like see that, you know, it's not, it's like ultimately it's not our land. It's not the land that we are born on in. And we have to, rest. I think there is a certain part of like the Islamic religion that says you should respect or you should still regard the laws of the country that you, or the space that you are in. Like, especially, I think there was something like that when the prophets migrated to Medina. Was it doubtful that they were going to accept it, accept him, but they welcome him? There is some lessons there that we need to learn as a Western Muslim. You know what I mean? That's just, that's my opinion. And I think it's relevant to be very cautious of that. I mean, we can say that um, we experience discrimination. And even in that discrimination, they are some they are blessing in disguise. I mean, Allah comforts us. What uh find the Mali Usurisa in the Mali Usurisa. Like Allah comforts us in all that the distress that we experience. And even then so do you still were you still able to practice your religion? Do you still pray? Do you do people still smile at you on the street? It's not all bad. It's not they populated the a kind of narrative of Islam in on each, on the social media. But if when you have a platform like the one that we are sharing now, you can present Islam in another way that people are also now opening their eyes and saying that you know not what all that is said on social media on all those news, not they're not all true. They're not all true. That is um, another thing that we need to, I guess, look. I mean, personally, that's the way I say it. I'm grateful that I'm able to still continue to practice my religion and still have that space. You know, I where I work, sometimes I I take some minutes, maybe during my break, and like, you know, I try to pray. You know, like there is like some kind of self-consciousness that comes there, but... You know, Alhamdulillah, when you have people that are willing to accommodate you in their environment, you got to be thankful because Allah did that and he can also did the, do the opposite. So if you are grateful for Islam and in, no, matter, in the, no matter how little that you can do to emphasize or to identify yourself as a Muslim, because, you know, so we are not giving that, this chance. I did not give them the chance to to worship, to pray, to do so many things, to give sakat, and we have that chance. So we should be thankful to for that. I mean, that's basically that's my journey of my spiritual balance. To you, sorry, I took so many times. <laughs> to you, you can go ahead. Sorry, of the um, that's that's one aspect of the of the actually because you know the way you are talking and you're talking about communication has been put in place by the society and then discrimination and things like that yes more of a I mean, spiritual crisis even if you are not in a western country the way you are in Nigeria everybody has their own um, spiritual crisis and yes. that I mean, for, for instance I'm still I say like, observing my high pain prayer prayers in Observing my fasting, I'm doing so that call. When you are done with the, I mean, the, the obligation ones, you feel like there are still other our things I want to be doing. So, yeah. I, my, I mean, to move the closer to Allah. Mm -hmm. And at the point in time, you just find out that all those things you are doing, you are no longer doing it. You are feeling lazy towards it. And, yeah. you know, you know things are like, what is going, actually going on? Mm -hmm. Do you mean that I'm forsaking the Allah? Mm -hmm. No, sometimes you feel like your prayers are not answered. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Especially with the, the concentration part. Actually, the things that block our prayer, the answering of our prayer. Yeah. Actually, mm -hmm. prayer. Because of this is, I mean, it could be stress, it could yeah. be so pressure, it could be sometimes, it could even be depression sometimes. Like, you yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not married. You know. Yeah. There are some things that I, I do, that I do then that now I would feel like, what is going on? I no longer, I no longer do these things. But because of the pressure and 
there are some other things that will require your attention as well. Mm-hmm. You don't have enough space, time as you used to have it. Or perhaps space, or sometimes it's going to be another factor that you, you yourself cannot even explain. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's part of the initial crisis you only encounter in your life. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> maintain a balance, I mean, a kind of balance among, among those things is that we try to just find a way of, even if it is not as expected of you, the way it's not, it's not the way you, it used to be. For instance, you wake up in the midnight for the high you to pay, yeah. then more, I mean, your cards or solar. Yeah. But like, in this case, it's just aligned. Do you understand? Because yes. I don't have to do it, even if it is two, even if it is, two. even if yes, two. yes, oh my goodness, yes, yes, yes. you are so right. right, yes, okay, you can alone without observing anything, just as you have now, anything. That's oh my god, no, the consistency is just alignment from us, the duration, no other things actually add to our reward, anyway. Yes, no, no matter what. Experience that kind of balance. I mean, you also feel content that I can come to life. I'm even able to do this. Even, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. What is we all have our spiritual crisis. Even if yeah, oh, yes, we do. We do. One thing is the only thing you don't have to be conscious of, conscious of is not to be too tired or not to be too busy. So, yes. in that sense, I think this unless you want you to see yourself as you are seeing for a lack and not lack and not even accept the prayers and then you also begin to feel the prayers or begin to feel lazy you don't want to do anything again. So in that case, the shaitan has won. <laughs> the shaitan yeah. has won. Allah yeah. is merciful, he's forgiving a message. Even if you feel like my sins is too much, my sins mm-hmm. are just too unbearable, I, I cannot do these things again. I'm even committing the, some other things I'm committing that I don't even expect it of me. Do you understand? So you just yes. have to remember what I say is, 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 is go for your thing. You know, yes. Forgive mm-hmm. him and just go back to him and then you try to put everything back into place no matter what. So, you know, in that mm-hmm. sense, it's a balance. We move ourselves back to on track. But if you yes. feel it, and then you submit yourself, then other things will now start come manifesting in your life. That they are not even, they are even out of your question. Do you understand? Yes, you know, I do. You're okay, in your own case now, you were, you were limited as a result of the environment you find yourself, right? Yeah. Um, I think you're moving with, and then the environment majorly. Basically, this is the environment. But you know, they feel like I just have to do this. Yes. It is. It is my. It is what I'm created on the head to do. So yes. when you have to do it, I need you to do it. You feel bad. You feel bad about it. Why? Why is it that I'm not? I'm unable to observe my prayers. I'm unable to do this. I'm unable to wear my job. I'm able to, no to care. So the, the feeling itself is a level of the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. I heard that. Like, you know, when you're having that thought and you're feeling, you're feeling guilty or you're feeling sad about it, that's a level of Iman there. It means that you know, you know what you're supposed to be doing. And, you know, for, for me, like, it took, it took a, a lot of discipline. It really does, you know. And from my from my own experience, I'll say that honestly, it is really possible to. Sorry, I'm just going to bring this down. It's really possible. I know some people will be like, "Oh, sometimes we we forget that, even though we are children or we are youth, and people, and maybe adults, they think that we're not responsible yet. When you have some youth that." You know, even despite the fact that Allah blessed them, they have health. Maybe they should be doing something that their peers are also doing, but 
they are very diligent in their prayers they are physical quran they fast their studies you know there are some actually there are some youth like 20 something years old teenagers that you know allah bless them allah bless their parents and so allah bless them and they follow the religion very like to the exact maybe not to the exact but they follow it like they follow it significantly and you see it in them i admire that what i experienced like in that teenage years sometimes i sat down and like aisha why are you even doing this bad thing why like how come how come you don't go out with friends how come you don't you know go socialize i mean is this what you were focusing on back then and you when know, i realized i was like you know what so what so what that's what happened and i'm glad about it i'm i'm very happy and alhamdulillah like all, all i can say is i'm i'm thankful yeah, for that experience compared to someone who five and seven that kind of environment and they say yeah, if that environment this is what is actually this is what is going on um i'm restricted and then you also fall into the decades of the society so, yeah so yeah i, so I, I know sorry i know sometimes i used to come home and pray all my prayers <laughs> like just join them all together like that because there is nothing there is no space and i know some some muslims are very confident like if you pray in the airport you know because i i would get self-conscious i won't be able to focus because like, i've tried it too and i still have to like wait and make sure that the five or six minutes that i'm going to do my prayer nobody is going to come because if they come then i'll get distracted and you know it had it happened to me and we try to find some develop some kind of routine so it works for you can be playing catch and um, rat and mouse or no cat and mouse with your prayer <laughs> You can't be playing cat and mouse with your prayer. It's like you're looking at the window, you're looking at the door. Is anybody coming? Is anybody is anybody here? Can I do I have that space for that five, ten minutes so I can pray my prayers and quickly get out of here? And it's so interesting. Like sometimes when I think about it, it's like really, really, <laughs> really. You get really self-conscious, especially when you have to like do that in public. It's like, oh, what if they think that I'm weird? What if this? What if that? I mean, I tried it. It's nerve wracking and you have to focus and you have to be mindful that you are in front of Allah. You know, it's, it's, it's a struggle there. It's like, ooh, ooh, let's keep it together. Let's keep it together. So you don't have to, the only thing is, you don't have to be careful. Yes. Iman, Yazid, Yankos, it increases and it decreases. So that is Iman. When you believe in Allah, you follow what the prophet says. If the level of Iman increases and decreases at the same time. So, yes. Yeah, I mean, it does depend on the kind of situation you find yourself in. What I would like to try to find a kind of striker balance in whatever we do. So, oh, no matter what, I just have to do this. No so, matter what, I want to do be careful as well and then be consistent in things we even feel like we are doing and then don't even know whether Allah accepts this or not in the first place. At least try to be consistent. Yeah. Allah will be don't know what Allah is going to see in that will so, ah, oh. yeah. yeah definitely definitely you really don't know. That's just it. That's just the way to to maintain our spiritual balance. And then even with people that will make us, that will make our human grow. Yes, yes, that's, that's true. true. You know, yes. you are around, that's a dream, that are even, you feel like they are doing things that, you know, oh my God, this, this person's demand is really good, you know? You also yes. want to strive, to strive towards doing those things. But yes. People will feel like, this was, they don't care. <laughs> they can only do the, whatever they want. They want to look to these people, so we are such as with people whose who's iman we felt are higher, our oh, higher degrees than have. Don't you think that they can be in the same as the Yeah, 
Yeah, I I told I agree with that. But like I think we can we can we can talk about uh depression now too because I feel like it's closely related. You can use your spirituality depending on where you are to.